Hey friends, Pastor Fieberkorn here with you for Catechism Monday. Although like has already happened once in the year 2023, this is coming to you on a Tuesday. So uh, get ready. It's going to be a two for Tuesday, uh, two devotions coming your way. Hey, I could have probably tried to trudge into the office tomorrow, yesterday afternoon and, and get a devotion out. But at that point, for those of you who do it in the morning, it's a, it's a foregone conclusion anyway. So uh, hopefully maybe you'll see this today. Um, yeah, a little bit of ice is a lot more dangerous than a couple inches of snow. So hope you were safe yesterday um, and are back in the swing of things today. We've been working through the Office of the Keys, the sixth chief part of the catechism, sometimes, uh, quite honestly, a forgotten part. And we've been talking about confession and absolution, which is Office of the Keys by another name. But if you look in your catechism, there'll be a section that says confession and absolution, or office of the keys, and then there's like there's another little section on it, and that that's what we're getting to now. Um, in this part, it's called "What is the office of the keys?" And so we will we'll go to that. And by the way, we're going to look at the scripture for this next week. So uh, the answer is this: the office of the keys is that special authority which Christ has given to His Church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. Okay. Now, again, next week, we're going to look at the scripture from John 20 in the upper room where Jesus grants this authority. He also grants it in Matthew 18 when he's speaking to Peter, or sorry, Matthew 16. So we'll talk more about where this teaching is grounded in scripture, but I assure you it is. And the reason I say that is because when you teach this in new member class, um, especially to those who maybe didn't come from a Catholic or Lutheran background, um, this idea of the church having authority to either forgive your sins or not is uh, is quite a repulsive thought to some people. In fact, I had a friend one time um, who found out I went to a Lutheran church, and he proudly declared that he went to one once to visit, and he would never go back again because a man stood up in front of the church, a pastor, a mere man, and had the uh, gall to say that he was forgiven that person's sins. And he says, the only person that can forgive my sins is God alone. And uh, I tried to explain to him, um, God uses that man to declare his forgiveness. So yeah, God, only God can forgive you, but how does he tell you you're forgiven? He uses the voice of a pastor. Um, and again, that, that didn't help. The kid the, the kid did not come around. He, it was just totally foreign to him uh, that this could be a possibility. But uh, yet we read in scripture, this is how God has set up his church to work. He has given, Christ has given the keys of forgiveness to the church, to open the door of heaven, unlock the gates of heaven to those who will repent, but to those who do not repent, to withhold forgiveness. Now, I want you to know that when the church says we're withholding forgiveness to you, we're locking the door to heaven because you're unrepentant, um, they, are not, <laughs> they are not closing the door to heaven. God closes the door of heaven to the unrepentant already. When the church withholds the proclamation of forgiveness to the unrepentant, they're basically just letting them know the reality that's already true, that the gate is shut. Um, so uh, this brings up a lot of questions. Um, what uh, does it mean if we repent of our sins and then, okay, the door's open and then we sin some more and the door's shut and then we repent of them, they're open. Uh, it's not like this door <laughs> swings open and shut between every Sunday. I mean, we either have saving faith or we not, but, but if we live enough time in unrepentance, or if the church calls us to repent and say, I don't know, say we're um, um, blatantly outright outspoken racist, <laughs> and uh, our brothers and sisters in church, maybe even our pastor catches wind of it, and they call us to repentance, and they, and they go through the steps of Matthew 18, they visit with us individually, and then they bring it before the elders, and then they take it before the church, and still, that person won't budge, they don't care right? Um, then the church would say to them, your sins are not forgiven. You are persistently living in this unrepentant sin, right? Well, forgiveness is withheld from you because Jesus forgives the repentant. All right? Now, the point of this is not to exercise power and authority. The point of this is to call the erring sinner back to repentance, Right? We see this playing out in Scripture with the Corinthian congregation. In one letter, Paul calls a man to repentance for a, a very egregious sin. 
And then the second letter, we see that that man had turned from his sin. And now he's he's yelling at the Corinthian congregation saying, you better turn and forgive him because he's repented. You can't withhold forgiveness now. What is the office of the keys? The office of the keys is men in the office of the ministry speaking God's voice to let people know their sins are forgiven when they confess them and are repentant. And also to warn those who are erring before it's too late. The Office of the Keys is a very, very loving office. Uh, it can be one of the most offensive offices on earth, especially to unrepentant sinners. But it's a necessary office, and one, quite frankly, that we don't talk a whole lot about in the church and that we should probably talk about more. So I hope you'll tune in next week. Uh, if you're skeptical about this, if this sounds foreign in your ears, uh, we'll treat some scripture passages that take this up. God be with you in the week to come. Stay warm, and God's peace to you.